Hey, tool bankers. I'm here today to talk with you about some of the immutable laws that make up the framework of the tool bank program and the logic behind them. These laws are true across the entire tool bank network, so whether you're in Portland, Cincinnati, Houston, or Baltimore, the rules apply, each and every one of them. So let's dive right in. Rule number one, each tool bank lends tools to charitable organizations only. Tool bank tools are not available to individuals for personal use. Tool banks are not in the business of competing with retailers, and this is a primary distinction between tool libraries and tool banks. Tool banks serve the sector of the community least likely to purchase or rent tools and equipment, the nonprofit sector. In this way, each tool bank is actually a colleague to their local retailers. Be sure to provide the manager at your area Home Depots with a handful of tool bank brochures to keep under the pro desk for just this reason. Number two. Each tool type and its details are managed by Tool Bank USA. Each tool type includes a common name, a short description, its average retail price, and a picture. These records are collected in a table called the Tool Type Catalog. Local Tool Bank staff can easily suggest the addition of new tool types, which is how the Tool Type Catalog grows over time. For example, when the Baltimore Tool Bank opened, their staff asked that snow shovels be added to the Tool Type Catalog, and voila! A tool type record was added in the tool tracking platform and is now visible to all tool banks. The reason for this level of detail control is that the tool type catalog records are used by every tool bank to define their inventory. A single list of tool types ensures that a bow rake has the same cost, the same picture, and the same retail value across the entire tool bank network. The specifics of a tool type is fodder for endless discussion. So to eliminate that headache and to increase efficiency, consistency at every tool bank, the tool type catalog is managed by Tool Bank USA. Number three, the tool handling fee is 3% of the retail value of the tools borrowed times the number of weeks borrowed. The tool handling fees are the same at every tool bank. The tool handling fee is a key instrument in maximizing a tool borrower's accountability and not meant to be developed into a primary or sole source of income for a tool bank. The multiplier percentage is a constant across the tool bank network and cannot be modified. However, there is a way for a tool bank to increase its program revenue, and that's to lend more tools. Number four, tool banks don't really have a protected service territory. Any nonprofit organization is welcome to apply for membership at any tool bank it chooses. For instance, a church in Baltimore may choose to join the Charlotte Tool Bank to support a mission trip in the North Carolina area. As long as they qualify for membership, they're welcome to borrow tools from the tool bank of their choosing. This list of tool bank basics really covers some of the core concepts of the tool bank model that look really simple, but are actually quite complex. Tool Bank USA staff is always on hand to answer any questions you might have, or let us know if you have any other ideas of questions that we can answer or should cover in a training video like this one. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about the tool bank. In the apartment above me, there is the lovingest pair. I don't know what she has to be jealous of. She has a face that just a mother could love.